Hi everyone, and welcome back, or welcome, if you're here for the first time, to our channel, Make Believe Storytime. My name is Beatrice, and today you are joining me in my magical den for another extra special, original Make Believe story called Uncle Jez and the Jukebox. This story is an early birthday present for Miles, and an early Father's Day present for Les from myself and my boyfriend, Jez. It is also Make Believe Storytime's way of celebrating the Windrush Day which falls on June the 22nd, so early celebrations all round. Today's video is part of our original Make Believe Stories series. These stories are created from scratch with lots of love and dedication by our team for you guys. Sam Ellswood has written the story, Wanatsu has made some wonderful illustrations for it, and I of course will be reading it out loud for you. Now sit back, Relax, and let's see what Uncle Jez and Miles get up to. Uncle Jez and the Jukebox Uncle Jez closed the taxi door behind him and grinned down at Miles as they stood on the pavement together. Mum and Dad will be loading at the old house for a while, so we have the whole morning to explore. Miles hugged his toy dog scout into a tight squeeze, squashing him into his neck. He was feeling nervous about the move. He was trying hard to be brave, but he was frightened he would miss the old house. Uncle Jez held out his hand and together they walked up the overgrown path to the open front porch. The wooden frame was painted white and decorated with hundreds of tropical flowers and little shamrocks. They had been carved into the wood and painted brilliant shades of red and green. I can't believe I didn't notice these carvings before. Uncle Jez said. He ran his fingers over them in astonishment. These are the national symbols of a Caribbean island called Montserrat. My grandparents grew up there. He looked down at Miles with wide eyes. Perhaps this house has been waiting for us, he said excitedly and took the key from his pocket. The house was dreadfully dim inside. It had stood empty for a long time and the air tasted of dust. Miles hugged Scout even tighter and tried again to be brave. Uncle Jez set about opening curtains and windows and the sun was soon streaming into the room. Shall we go from the bottom up or from the top down? He asked. Mm, bottom up? Miles said, pointing timidly upwards. To the basement! Uncle Jez pointed dramatically and marched off to an archway in the corner of the living room. The basement had been used as a bedroom, and there were movie posters hanging on every wall, most of them curling up at the corners with age. They walked along the wall at the bottom of the stairs and admired the posters. As he turned around, Uncle Jez jumped in surprise. On the wall opposite the stairs was an old-fashioned jukebox. I don't remember this being here before, he said. Uncle Jez lifted Miles up so that he could see inside. Miles had forgotten all about being nervous and stuck out his index finger. No, cried Uncle Jez, but it was too late. Miles jabbed one of the buttons and the jukebox came to life. There was a low mechanical whirring sound as the selected record was moved into place and the sound of drums filled the room. I know that sound. Those are steel pans, Uncle Jez exclaimed. Miles looked blankly at him. Caribbean drums. In the corner of the room was a broom cupboard. Bright sunlight shone from beneath the door. That's not possible. Uncle Jez whispered, walking towards the door with Miles in his arms. The door swung away from them to reveal all the music and colour of the Montserrat Carnival. It was unmistakable. A band of drummers was passing them by as they leaned through the doorway, open-mouthed, and wide-eyed. Bump! Someone knocked them into the crowd and they were moving with the dancers, caught in the current as it flowed down the street like a river. Miles clung to Uncle Jez as he tried to find a way out. Eventually they tumbled off the road next to a cafe. They stood there catching their breath and watched spellbound as the dancers rounded the bend and disappeared into the depths of the town. They are so cool! Miles said, a smile spreading across his face. Are we in Montserrat? I think we are, 
Uncle Jez said softly and set Miles down on his feet. He looked around. The cafe stood alone at the edge of the town, behind which rose a lush green forest. Covering the outside wall of the cafe were framed posters, newspaper articles and postcard collections. In the centre of the one wall was a photograph of an enormous ship at sea. What's that? Miles asked. That is the Empire Windrush, Uncle Jez answered knowingly. Your great-grandparents came to London alongside many other Caribbean people on ships just like this one. They're called the Windrush Generation, and they're an important part of British history, of our history. You see, these people didn't come on their own. They brought with them their traditions and their culture, and these got all mixed in with the British culture. They are a part of the UK and the London that we know and love. To the other side of the cafe stretched a wide sandy beach and a sparkling green sea. Uncle Jez smiled. Come on, there's something I want to show you. They left the road and walked down onto the sand. It's black, Mars exclaimed as he stepped onto the beach. Yep, it's beautiful, isn't it? It's amazing. I didn't know sand could be black. Why is it black? Miles dug his hands into the sand, lifting it up and letting it slip through his fingers. Montserrat is a volcanic island, which means it was created by a volcano. The sand is made up of tiny pieces of lava. Miles looked around and grew quiet. It's so different here, he whispered. The sand and the music and the forests and the buildings. They must have been very brave to leave their home and go to a different country. Uncle Jess thought about this. You could say they were very brave, but it wasn't just bravery. It was an adventure. Different isn't bad. It's just different. Miles nodded, but didn't say anything. The sound of the steel pans broke into the quiet as the carnival spilled over the hill and began snaking its way back down the main road. The dancer's silhouettes were like spilled ink against the yellow sunlight. Miles gasped as five of the dancers rose high into the sky above the crowd. They walked on great long legs like giant stick insects. Their heads were too big, with sharp angles and their arms and bodies moved around in a crazy rhythm. He clung to Uncle Jez's leg and pointed at them. What? Oh, Miles, look! It's the Mocha Jumbi! Are they scary? Miles asked, disappearing further behind Uncle Jez, who laughed out loud at the question. Not at all. The Mokajambi are here to watch over us and protect us from harm. They are the good spirits of our ancestors. Come on, let's go and see. They walked back up the beach and onto the side of the road. As the Mokajambi rounded the bend, Miles saw that the two big heads were in reality big hats and masks. Why are they so tall? Miles asked. And where are their feet? The Mokajambi's enormous shadows washed over them as they passed by. They're stilt walkers. It takes them years to learn to walk on stilts as tall as these. At that moment, one of the Mokajambi looked down at Miles and Uncle Jez. He danced his way over to them and leant down as far as his stilts would allow, still dancing. He raised his arms slowly, pointing long fingers at the cafe behind them. Uncle Jez looked over his shoulder at the cafe and back to the Mokajambi. They were held in the space of his open arms, the protection of their ancestors flowing from the Mokajambi to shield them on their journey back. Miles, he's showing us the way home. Uncle Jez nodded respectfully to the Mokajambi and Miles waved. They ran hand in hand down to the cafe and burst through the door straight into the basement at the new house. The room was silent but for the sound of their hearts thumping in their chests. Well, said Uncle Jez, that was quite an adventure. Miles nodded. Will we be safe here, without the Mokajambi to watch over us? He asked. Uncle Jez smiled warmly down at him. Yes, the good spirits of your ancestors live on inside you. All their strength and wisdom is in you. And that is what will protect you and help you make good choices in your life. Well, 
I think if my ancestors were brave enough to leave their country behind, then I can be brave enough to leave my old house behind and start a new adventure in this one. Uncle Jez scooped Miles into a hug. Of course you can. But Miles, Montserrat is only part of your history. You also have a great-grandfather who was in the Navy and left his country and his home in order to protect them. His family came over from France a long, long time ago. And that's only on your mum's side. Then there is the family on your dad's side too. Miles looked up at Uncle Jez and then at the jukebox. Shall we pick another song? He asked. The end. Well, what an amazing jukebox, am I right? I wish I had one of those so I could explore my family history. Now, if you've enjoyed today's story, remember to follow Make Believe Storytime on Facebook, Instagram and YouTube for more activity suggestions, free colouring pages and, of course, storytelling videos. And if you've enjoyed today's video, then please do give us a thumbs up, subscribe and maybe even share this story with some friends and family you think may enjoy it. And if you want to keep up to date with our content, make sure you head over to our channel and hit that notification bell too. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Thank you.